Yeah, it's, it's yeah. funny. I mean, I think if, if you had taken me back a year ago, 12 months ago, and I bet you would probably think the same thing. But if we said, okay, you know, Tesla is going to be at a two year low in late November, I'd say, okay, they probably really missed on uh, earnings or deliveries or something like that. Um, you know, a huge kind of macro pivot wouldn't really have been on, on my radar. So, yeah. um, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's no idea it's Elon was going to buy Twitter back then either. That and didn't I help. Think, <laughs> no, I think even if Elon was not buying Twitter and there was not all that drama, I don't think Tesla would be much above $200 right now. I mean, I think, you know, this is my guess, like, you know, Tesla might be 200, 220 ish or something like that. Even if the Twitter thing never existed, you know, I just think it's a major macro, you know, that's, you know, it's possible Tesla could be at the 170, 180 mark still, even if Twitter thing never existed. But I'm saying like best case, if you had a parallel universe, I don't think Tesla would, would have, would be above 220 right now best case even if the twitter so people a lot of people are like so upset about the twitter thing they think they've lost faith in elon and tesla because of that and i see that argument all the time twitter overhang all this stuff and that's caused but you know it might contribute because elon did have to sell a certain amount of shares but uh i don't i don't necessarily attribute the the, the stock uh deterioration primarily because of that. i think it's a macro market you know event yeah, I, I mean, it's kind of interesting because we saw this, you know, just thinking through what happened last year and like Q1 and Q2 were, were total blowouts and the stock still fell. So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, it was kind of clinging on uh, based on the fundamentals. And then with like, I don't even, what would you call Q3? Like a moderate miss or basically meeting expectations? Yeah, um, met expectations. The, yeah. Basically met expectations and in the, in the, in the stock just like absolutely plummeted. So to me, it's, it's kind of... Um, like there's any reason at all and, and the market's just going to completely punish you. So I, 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 you know, I still stay focused on fundamentals. Gary Black had a really good thread last night of kind of comparing this to 2019 and, and 2019 was really when I, I, I went very aggressively into Tesla. Um, and to me, it does seem pretty similar, except that the macro background is very, very different. Uh, but the, the kind of setup and, and how discounted and or disjointed, I should say, uh, the stock is both from like price targets, but probably more importantly from the, like, its fundamental value, I think, and just fundamental performance. Um, to me, it seems like there's a huge amount of uh, negative news already built into to the stock. So um, I, I could see a pretty significant rally from here, not investment advice, because we've been <laughs> we've been wrong consistently this mm -hmm. year. That's been a theme of uh, our last couple of conversations. But um, yeah, I, I think there's so much concern right now, especially around China, and we'll get into this in a little bit. But um, yeah, I, to me, it just seems like the if you if Tesla delivers a couple quarters on on pretty strong fundamentals, uh, I wouldn't surprise me if we're back in the you know mid three hundreds, maybe even approaching four hundred at some point. But not yeah. investment Someone advice. Tweeted a uh, a cool infographic I liked. I'll have to retweet it. Um, maybe I'll do it while we're talking. But it was basically an infographic of forward PEs of all like the Nasdaq companies. And Tesla's forward PE right now is like, I think it's like 30, close to 30. And uh, yeah, right here, I'll retweet it right now from this guy, um, Herschel Kamani. But basically, um, Apple's forward PE is 21. Microsoft is 21. Google's 18. Amazon is 55. McDonald's is 26, you know? Um, yeah. And these are just not NASDAQ. There's a bunch of companies. So... Tesla's in this forward PE that's like just mixed in with all the rest of the crowd that's not growing 50% year over yeah. year. You know, the rest of the crowd's growing like 10 to well, 20%, you know, and Tesla's growing 50, you know, 40 to 60% and got the same PE. Yeah. Well, in the, I mean, and that's with the analysts, you know, earn, earnings estimates for next year, which uh, works out to be $5.63 uh, for 2023, hmm. which I like, that's going to be a really bad, bad year. I think if that's all that they, that they can muster up for next year. Um, yeah. So yeah, it, it, I was thinking actually, we did, I, we posted this um, kind of deep dive <laughs> on some of the mega caps and the PE ratios that they have relative to their growth rates and the peg ratios. Um, that was before Tesla had this, this huge kind of downturn. I think it'd be good to update that because i would imagine tesla's peg right now even using the analyst numbers is like drastically below one and, and in my mind that's not really a sustainable valuation so i think i think right now um the market is is just kind of expecting tesla to fumble they're expecting you know another shanghai plant shut down they're expecting 
very clearly, I think, much slower sales in China and and uh, margin pressure because of that. Um, yeah. And so I think if, if Tesla, like I'm expecting those things too, but even when I bake them in, I'm getting numbers that are a lot higher than, you know, 563 for, for earnings next year. Um, mm-hmm. So I think there, there could be some really good news, um, you know, if it, if, if, if Tesla just starts delivering, um, then even if the PE stays the same, um, then just the, the earnings beat would, it would move the, the number higher. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's always possible that, that the, the number can be compressed or that Tesla misses. So that's uh, so why we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. But, but to me, it just seems like it's been beat up beyond all proportion to their actual fundamentals. Um, and it's also, we had a, a conversation or you, you had a, a DM with uh, somebody who probably don't want to go into too many details. I'm not yeah. sure how confidential they wanted to keep it. Uh, suffice to say, it's becoming a very popular, um, and, and it seems to me like a group think kind of thing that like, oh, clearly this is when Tesla falls back to earth because their valuation never made sense relative to other automakers. And it's a great yeah. short right now. And Margins me, it's like, compressing. Yeah. 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 So and that again seems like 2019, where like all the smart money, quote unquote, smart money <clears> is saying like oh, Tesla's overvalued and uh, this is the end. And like, look at Elon and his antics and like all the stuff that doesn't really matter. That's not fundamentals. Um, that's what they're focusing on. And so to me, it's just it seems like a yeah. good setup for that reason. It's a different reality, you know, and, you know, what is reality, you know, other than what's the, eye, the you know, the perception of the eye of the beholder. Right. So the great thing about stock markets is in the end whatever the true reality is will be proven by the stock price, you know? So with everything else in life and history, you can almost change the realities and tell different stories or narratives about the reality. Um, and you can do that with stocks for some time, but in the end, the stock price will prove out which reality is correct or more likely, you know, which reality was more correct than the other. So one reality right now is, you know, Tesla's, facing compressed margins, like you said, all these bare points. Um, and Gordon Johnson did an incre- w- 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 was on, there was an incredible space last night that whole Mars um, hosted. And uh, I got to listen to it for a few minutes of on and off when I was running errands and stuff. And uh, it, it was like over a thousand or 1500 people later on in the evening, because there was a bunch of people joined in on this. Even Gary Black, I didn't hear him, but I have to go back. I think it was recorded, but uh, but Gordon. It was Johnson like two thousand when I jumped in, right at the very end. Yeah. Unfortunately, I was like, "No, I missed it." <laughs> yeah, but Gordon Johnson was on there, and he was debating the bear points, and it's just a very different reality. When I hear Gordon Johnson talk about it, like part of me is, if I didn't like, I try to think about nothing else that I like. Pretend I don't know anything, and I listen to him, and everything he's saying makes complete sense. If I don't know anything about Tesla. Everything he's saying is like, oh, that's that's a great story. I believe that reality, you know? And then I have to think, oh, but all this stuff, all this knowledge I have about Tesla on this other reality that I've studied for years doesn't jive with the reality that Gordon Johnson is. So one of them is wrong, right? And so yeah. um, I think it's it's fascinating to me with the stock market to see these realities. It's not like politics. You can, you can have two different realities or more than two realities in politics and all that, but you can never figure out who's actually you know, absolutely right. It's just always going to be a debate. But with stocks, you know, there was tons of bears on Apple for many years. And now that reality has been proven wrong, right? And Apple's clearly the biggest company in the world and deserves it at this time. So, you know, it's just a matter of time before we see which reality with Tesla will play out. And for a while, Tesla could stay depressed. I saw another tweet by a guy, Fallacy Alarm, um, that showed like, during the history of Tesla's rise, you know, a thousand X return or a hundred X return since it went IPO or whatever, that um, 70% of the time Tesla has been consolidating or, or going down. And only 30% of the time has the stock price been going up or something, you know? So hmm. despite going up, some kind of crazy metric like that, despite the stock being a hundred X from where it IPO or whatever. So that's pretty interesting to think about too. Just, you know, there's a lot of time for people to panic you know, and, and believe that reality. But then when they're wrong, they're very wrong and the stock zips up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that definitely makes, makes sense. And you certainly saw that in 2019. I mean, I remember kind of thinking, I, I I've spoken about this, uh, before, but maybe not in a while, but I, I was initially not invested in Tesla. I just thought the valuation was crazy. 
And then, you know, I started listening to all the things Elon was saying about wanting to, you know, basically be best in class for like if it, automotive manufacturing efficiency and profitability. I was like, okay, well, that's probably unlikely, but I see what he's saying. And then, so there was this whole debate and I was like, okay, I started to see it in 2019 where they actually turned the corner of profitability in, in Q3. And I was like, oh, all those things that he's been saying for years, like they just kind of clicked. And it was like very clearly to me, the turning point. And I remember the stock was up like 10%. And I was thinking like the stock should be up double because it kind of like <laughs> eviscerated the entire bear uh, narrative, which was like yeah. they were going to go bankrupt because they actually generated positive cash flow, positive earnings. And it was like, OK, this is the path to sustainability. And now they figured out the Model 3 ramp. So they're only going to be higher volumes, more operating leverage from here. So like just really bolstered the uh, the bull case. And to me, it was just like. The, the market was just like very slowly kind of trickling and it you know over the next 18 months we saw what happened but it wasn't like the the facts immediately turned things around overnight so it yeah. could be the the same sort of situation where you know it just takes 12 18 months 24 months I, we don't know yeah. when the market will catch up but yeah. uh, assuming they do kind of deliver in the manner that we think they will on fundamentals um it will just be a matter of time it's a the, that old yeah. warren buffett quote short term it's a voting machine long term the market's a, a weighing machine yeah. Same thing happened in 2013, 2014, you know, good news. It seemed like it was producing the Model S and, you know, motor trend car of the year, but the stock was still depressed, like it was going to fail. And after a few quarters, finally it zipped up. So yeah, would you have to wait for that time? If our reality is right and Tesla is going to succeed in all of the technology it's building with FSD and such, especially, then there will be a time I don't know when, but there will be a time where the stock will likely zip up. It's not going to be a steady appreciation of, you know, five or ten percent a week for twenty weeks straight. It, it would probably more likely be, you know, twenty five percent one week, fifty percent the next week, and then flat, and then up a hundred percent over the month after that, or something like that. It could very well be something erratic like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so we don't know when that'll be. If it's eighteen months from now, twenty four months from now, or maybe it's next year sometime. It's it's hard to say.